Today, we're going to find out if the quality of the Game Topper's table surface is more than just surface deep. I'm Chaz Marler, and this is what we're going to review today on the Component Proponent. Saving your game from the mundane, the Component Proponent, yeah! As a board game YouTube video making person, I film a lot of different games. And you know, that's why for a long time, long, long time, I have yearned for a table that's not only comfortable to play games on, but also looks nice on camera too. So for a long time, I've had the idea in the back of my mind of saving up for one of those custom made dedicated board gaming tables. You know, the ones made by the likes of BoardGameTables.com, Rathskellers, or Geek and Son. Mm hmm. Geek and Son. But as anyone who has looked into these tables can attest to, they, they can be rather spendy, you know? But finally investing in one of these pieces of gaming furniture has always, always been on my wish list. And that's why, a few months ago, when fellow board gaming enthusiast Kevin Burkhardsmeyer nailed it, when he first approached me about the possibility of producing a promotional video for a new portable gaming tabletop system that he was going to develop, which was going to be called the Game Topper, I was, to be honest, completely reluctant. Because a platform that rests on a tabletop just isn't what I was interested in, you know? I want a dedicated gaming table. And then... Gen Con. Because at Gen Con this year, several different publishers had Kevin's Game Topper tables set up in their booths and were using them to display and demo their games. So, curious, you know, each morning before the exhibit hall opened, I'd go over to those booths and inspect those tables. Every single day that I looked at these things, I got more and more intrigued. When I saw them up close, I became convinced not only that Kevin's Game Toppers are a legit piece of gaming furniture, and not only that they would actually probably better fit my lifestyle, but I also became convinced that I was just going to have to take the plunge and outright review it. Which brings us to this video. So yeah, now that I have invested in, received, and set up my own Game Topper tabletop, does it hold up to what I have always wanted in a dedicated gaming table? Well, I'm going to answer this question by taking a look at its construction, its features, its pros and cons, and the specific reasons why I feel like it is, or isn't, a good fit for me. Let's get started. Now, the moment that I finally saw one of the game toppers in person, I admit, I was impressed by the quality, the construction, and the materials that were used in this thing. I am happy to say that it looks nothing at all like the glorified plank of plywood covered loosely in felt that I have to confess to you is what I initially imagined when I first heard the idea for the product. A lot of work has gone into engineering and, and then re-engineering the design of these tables to achieve the proper balance of aesthetic and durability and portability and it shows. Now, the Game Topper tables are available in a variety of different sizes, but for me, I chose the one kind of in the middle, which is called the Watson. The Watson's gaming surface area measures 60 by 38 inches, which is roughly 5 feet by 3 feet, with 3 and a half inch rails that go all the way around its perimeter. Now, there's several other sizes of tabletops that are being produced as well, including a 6-foot long one, a 3-foot square one, and other sizes that are currently in consideration and development. But no matter which size table you choose, each one of these toppers is manufactured right here in the USA, using wood and powder-coated military-grade aluminum and nifty textured grip mat surface stuff on the bottom, which prevents the topper from sliding around or moving if you nudge it. And at first, honestly, I was skeptical about the topper's proclaimed anti-slide properties, but 
I fooled myself into becoming a believer, because while I was setting up my table for the first time, I absentmindedly just put one of the pieces down cockeyed, and then absentmindedly just went to straighten it, but of course it wouldn't budge. And at first I thought, oh, it's stuck on something, until I realized that no, not moving around is specifically what this thing is designed to do. So yeah, the, the grip mat grips. But that's enough about the underside of the table, which is a lot less fun to play on. Let's get back to talking about the top. Specifically, the railings that go around the perimeter of the top. Now, the rails are raised one and a half inches above the playing surface, which I really, really like, because it stages the game nicely while still providing enough room to keep the dice and components from falling off the edges of the table. And if you've ever played a game with me, you will know that about 35% of my time is spent on the floor looking for dice and meeples and cards that I have knocked onto the floor. But no more, no! In this respect, game toppers have set me free from the burdens of my own graceless butterfingery. My life begins today. Additionally, since the game topper table topper unironically sits on top of an existing table's table top, the rails are going to be three and a half inches higher than the regular table's surface. And I gotta say, this extra height, I love it. Having the railing elevated just those few extra inches can actually be more comfortable than leaning down onto the table itself. In fact, I had some friends over for gaming the day before my game topper arrived, and knowing what was coming, the lack of raised railing made the experience of leaning onto our normal table comparatively absolute unbearable torture. Uh, really, I can barely eat dinner at our table now without mentioning its miserable lack of railing three or four dozen times. What's more, my family has begun eating their dinner in another room, presumably for the same reason. It seems they just can't stand to be around that lack of railing. But even with its built-in rails, the game topper remains very portable. It comes fully assembled, and to set it up, you, you simply place it on the table and lock its pieces together and nothing else, because that's it. Setup of the table takes literally just minutes. I mean, really, I've, I've played games of Kenzi that have taken longer than setting up the game topper. Really? Kenzi? We're actually gonna show side by side Tenzi? Okay, no, that's... Let's do that. We might as we've come this far. We might as well start using Tenzi for units of measurement. That's 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 great. So what is this? One and a half Tenzis. That's wonderful. Can we move on now? Because really, I think I think the Tenzi is starting to give me a rash. But the portability of the table is just one of the features that I think is worth talking about. So let's take a look at some of the other benefits that have been designed into it. I've discovered several other little features that I thought were clever little touches, such as the fact that the railing has its own built-in little gutter for holding cards or player boards or reference materials. Again, really clever. But even more clever is a built-in rail for mounting additional accessories, such as cup holders, goblet holders, coasters, and writing surfaces. There's also more accessories that are being considered for development, including player shields, a padded storage bag, and dice towers that mount right onto the table's railings so they're not on the table taking up your game real estate. They're just right there being useful. And what is a gaming tabletop without the ability to customize the mat that you play on? Well, the game topper comes with a neoprene mat that has a nice little discreet woven pattern on it. And as, as, as nice as that default mat is, there's a variety of additional mat designs that are also being produced. And from what I understand, these additional upcoming mats that they're working on are planned to be a thicker neoprene and stitched around the edges, making them a really high quality mat. And also something that I will be coveting and, and, and wanting most, most assuredly, so. Thanks, Kevin. But as nice as all of those special features are, not everything that we talk about can be all rainbows and kitten kisses. So let's take a look at some of my concerns that I had about the game topper in the pros and cons.
One of my biggest concerns about the game topper is that, since it comes apart, there's going to be a seam where the two halves join together. And that is a viable concern. Even so, I personally don't mind it as much, especially because that seam is a byproduct of what I see as one of the topper's greatest benefits, its ability to split into two sections for storage and portability. And why is it that I value the game topper's portability so much? Well, it's partially because, due to a previous back injury, I'm limited in how much weight I can carry. And admittedly, the, the thought of lugging around half of a table was something that I originally was pretty apprehensive about. For, for the 5 foot Watson table that I purchased, each half is about 31 and a half pounds, which for a game table solution really isn't bad. I mean, the luggage that I pack when traveling to conventions is frequently heavier than that. Now, of course, Everyone out there should always exercise caution when considering lifting and moving any piece of furniture and act within the restrictions of their own specific situation. But in my case, the weight of each tabletop section is manageable and it was one of the factors that encouraged me to proceed with investing in one. Another concern that I had was, since the game topper just sits on top of another table, it's possible for it to hang over its edges, depending on the table's size. Now, would the game topper flip or slide off of that table if someone pushed down on it while they were getting up from the table? Well, I tested this and I have found that while doing this will cause the topper to tip a little bit, the table itself that it's on is actually more likely to be the thing that flips over before the topper itself does. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty, the $34 question. Now that I've had a chance to use the game topper in a real world environment, if I was given the option to go back and do it all over again, would I still buy one? Well, here we go. While I would still just love to eventually get a dedicated gaming table, I have to admit that the game topper is a better fit for my gaming lifestyle right now. I mean, first of all, it's portable, meaning I can move it upstairs or downstairs, depending on whether I want to set it up in my living room for gaming with my family or temporarily put it in another room when we have company over for game day. What's more, it can be stored while it's not being used, preventing it from becoming a catch-all for the clutter that we inevitably collect while we live on this planet. So this portability, coupled with its competitive price in comparison to other fully constructed board game tables, convinces me that, yes, I would absolutely make the investment in a game topper table, topper, top, top thing, over again. Fun to use, hard to say. And if the game topper is a direction that you're interested in going in, well, you'll be happy to know that as of the time of this recording, the Kickstarter campaign for the game topper's whole family of different gaming tables is running right now. So I'm going to include a link to their Kickstarter in this video's description. But you know what? If this isn't the direction that you decide to go in for your gaming table, well, then I hope that this video has at least provided you with information that will be useful in making an educated purchase decision. A gaming table is one of those component upgrades that can enhance your gaming experience for years and years to come. And if there's another board game component upgrade out there that you think's worth talking about, tell me about it either in the comments below or at components at pairofdiceparadise.com. I welcome your suggestions and may even include them in an upcoming episode. Until then, for more board game news, reviews, and commentary, be sure to subscribe to the Pair of Dice Paradise YouTube channel, and I encourage you to remember that videos like this are made possible by viewers just like you who have been financially supporting Pair of Dice Paradise's Pod Pledge fundraising campaign. Thank you all for your support. It really does make a difference, and it's greatly appreciated. Take care, and until next time, I've been Chaz Marler, your component proponent. At Gen Con this year, several different publishers had Kevin's Table Toppers, Game Toppers actually, because that's what they're actually called, Game Toppers set up on their booths, in their booths. Let's start over. Okay. Toppers. I wanted a dedicated 
furniture, piece of furniture, gaming, no. Several different publishers had Kevin's ta game toppers, not table toppers, there's a typo in the script. I was convinced that not only Kevin's game toppers, cause that's the real name for it, game toppers, not table toppers, it's not a typo in the script there. Instead of producing a promotional video for Karks, 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 for Karks, Karks, buy a Kark, it's on Kickstarter. And a nifty textured grip mat on the surface of the bottom. Surface on the bottom. Bottom surface. On the... Below. <sighs> to keep it from sliding around your table. Whoosh! I lost my place. Now, admittedly, as clever as a self-cleaning avocado peeler? Well, no. But still, clever. Clever in its own right. But then, that just might be me. I mean, it's not like I still cork all the forks in our house just to just to be safe, because uh, that, that would be silly, right?